Over the past five months, I've been living here in Budapest, Hungary. And the crazy thing is, I basically came here by accident. I never thought in a million years that I'd be living here, let alone even visiting. However, this experience has definitely changed my life forever. I think it could also impact and change yours as well. And that's why I wanted to record this video. And so here's the story of how I ended up in Budapest, Hungary. So back in 2021, I was living in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, and my wife and our daughter were in the United States visiting some family for a couple of weeks. And so we figured instead of me spending a lot of money, I could stay with one of my good friends, Tamada. And during this time, we were both going through a really rough period in our lives. My business had slowed up. The income wasn't coming in the way we wanted. Same thing with her. Her business was slowed up. She was going through a transition career-wise, relationship-wise, and both of us were just really, really, really stressed. And then to add on to the pain to eat to make matters worse one day her water ran out it got shut off and we literally had no water in the place we couldn't bathe we couldn't shower we couldn't brush our teeth and i realized the longest time that i ever went without running water in america that typically doesn't happen i remember we went to one of my friend's apartments like a day or two later and it just felt so good to finally take a shower however we couldn't get that issue fixed at back at my friend Tamada's place. We found out that it was some issues with her landlords and all these crazy things going on. So I, I figured, hey, this is probably not a good idea for me to stay here anymore. And I started looking at the hostels. I had never been at a hostel. I always thought that these were gross, they're nasty. It's a place for people that just wanna party and that are bumming it, that have no money. And this is a really super nasty place to be. However, that was like the only option I could think of at the time because I didn't have enough money to go rent somewhere. It was during Christmas, everything was booked up. And so a hostel was pretty much my only option. I remember thinking like, man, my life is just not going in the direction that I want it to be. Like I, like before, prior to the year before, we were making 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 dollars a month. And now fast forward and I'm having to live in, in a hostel. And it just felt like, you know, I wasn't ever going to get be able to get back to where I was before. And so I go in this hostel and I was super nervous about it. I was there by myself. I had never had this experience before. And once I got there, I stayed at this uh, place in Playa del Carmen called Selena. And the environment was actually really, really cool. All the people there were super friendly. Um, they were very welcoming. And it was other people just like myself that were traveling, that were probably solo travelers, and they were looking for friends. So it was easy to connect with people. So fast forward, I think it was like two days or a day or so before my wife was gonna come um, from the United States into Mexico. I ended up meeting this girl, Lucia. She was one of my roommates um, at Selena. They have some of the dorms that are male and female. And so, um, one of the roommates that I had, her name was Lucia. And I remember we all went out, it was like a couple of us went out, we had a really good time. And she's like, man, when your wife comes back, we need to get together. So when my um, when my wife came back from the States to uh, back to Mexico, we ended up being able to put some money together and we were staying in, in, a, in a hotel. And at this time, my friend Lucia had ended up staying somewhere else herself. And so we ended up getting together. This was like a little bit right before Christmas, I believe. Uh, or New Year's, one of those two. And we ended up going from Playa del Carmen to Tulum for like a week or so. And we just, you know, had a lot of fun together, did a lot of things, had, had some good conversations. And she was always telling us like, you guys need to come to Budapest, Hungary. That's where she was living. She's like, you guys will love it. It's a fun place. And I had never heard of Budapest, Hungary. In my mind, I'm thinking, this does not really like, what is Budapest? That doesn't sound like a place that I would wanna go. And she's from Croatia. I'm like, okay, I've heard of people going to Croatia, but I've never heard in my entire life of someone telling me to go to Hungary. So, you know, you add it, oh yeah, I'll add it to my list. But in reality, I'm like, this is probably not a place that I'm ever gonna go. So fast forward a little bit after that, me and my wife went back to the United States to visit some family. And during this time, we're trying to figure out like, where do we wanna go next? In 2021, we had became digital nomads and our plan was to travel the world and find places, cities, countries that we really, really enjoy and that allows us to live our, our best life and to explore and visit other cultures. However, it can get 
a little tiresome and overwhelming consistently choosing a new place. So the plan that we had was we'll switch every three months. Like I'll pick for three months, she'll choose for three months, I'll pick for three months, she'll, she'll pick for three months, and it makes it a lot easier. And so during this time, I just felt like God was saying like, hey, you guys should go to Europe, you should go to London. And so I just started telling people like, hey, we're gonna go to London, we're gonna go to London. And we had a date set where me, my wife and our daughter, we're gonna go to London, we're gonna stay there, and we're gonna see like what the rest of our travels look like. And so I remember I had got this client and I was like, as soon as this client uh, pays, I'm going to get the flight, get the hotel, like all the stuff that we need. And so I remember I got this client, I think they paid in full, it was like a couple of thousands of dollars, like a big payment. And the deal that we worked out is he was like, I'm going to check some things out and uh, I'm not sure if this is what I'm looking for. So I just want to know if I could have like a request a refund in the first like 24 hours or something like that. So I'm like, all right, I just got to wait for this money. He's going to love it. And then after he tells me he loves it, then we're going to go buy our flight and everything like that. So I don't even remember how long it was, but not that long. Calls me up. This isn't really what I'm looking for. I want a refund. And I was trying to talk him out of it on the phone, but he eventually was like, you know, I really want my money back. And I ended up having to give him his money back. So I was kind of bummed out. I'm like, man, that was the money that I was supposed to use to buy these flights to go to London. What are we going to do now? Because still business was slow. We didn't have a ton of money. So I'm like, what, what are we going to do? How are we going to make this happen? And I remember it was like a day or two later from then, I get a message from Lauren Tickner, right? On Instagram. If you guys don't follow her, check her out. She's an awesome entrepreneur, a female entrepreneur. And she was like, hey, I remember uh, we have tried to connect or something like that, but I'm doing an uh, in-person event in London and here's the date. And the crazy thing is, is the date was before I was supposed to go to London. So I'm like, man, if that money would have came through, I wouldn't, I, I would have missed it because I would have already bought my flight. You can't cancel and all that stuff. But now since I didn't buy the flight, I can uh, go to this event and I can start to buy some of that stuff now because it's cheaper because I could go by myself and then my wife could meet me later. However, the thing that really worried me at the time is that I had never solo traveled outside of the country before. I had been to, with my wife to London, Paris, Italy, Mexico, Colombia, like all these different countries, but I had always been with her, with someone else to help me. And I had never been somewhere else. And so I had this fear of, man, how am I gonna do this like on my own? And I was really, really nervous about it. A lot of people were like, bro, how are you nervous about travel? Like you've traveled all these countries, you're a digital nomad. I'm like, I don't know, I've just, never done it myself and it was this big fear i had and i said you know i have to take this opportunity to overcome it because who knows what's on the other side and i remember i just went on a walk praying about it thinking about it and by the time before i was done with the walk i was like i'm gonna walk around this pond and i'm just gonna pray about it and see what ideas i have before I got done walking around um, the pond, one of my clients messaged me, was like, hey, I know my payment's not due for it's like a couple of days or something like that, but I wanna pay you now. And that gave me the money that I needed to buy um, the, the plane ticket to go over there. And so from there, I was really excited. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to London. I'm gonna see what happens. So fast forward, I go to London, I go to this event, I meet Lauren, I meet some other people, and it's a really good time. Now, a couple of days after the event, I am at this coffee shop, right? I go, I buy some food and I sit next to this guy and I'm asking the waitress like, hey, what's the code for the Wi-Fi? Right? I was gonna get some work done. Like, I'm in a different country. Um, at the time I was staying at a hostel and there's nowhere to work. So I'm like, I'll go to a coffee shop, I'll go to a restaurant. Um, and then they tell me, oh, the Wi-Fi isn't working now, which made me super frustrated at the time because I'm like, I already paid for my food. Now I, I can't work and eat and I can't leave because I just paid. And then when I go to another place, I'm gonna have to buy something again because they don't like you just sitting in there and you haven't bought anything. So I was really frustrated. And I don't know if the guy next to me could tell or, or what, but he was like, hey, um, what's going on? Like, how's your day going? We started talking and he was like, what are you doing traveling? I started telling him and um, He's like, what type of places are you looking to go? And I was like, these are the type of places I'm looking for. I want something that's warm, a place that's cheap, a place that has like a good city, good vibe, all these different types of things. And he's like, bro, have you ever been to Istanbul, Turkey? You really have to go to Istanbul, Turkey. And I had never really heard of Istanbul, Turkey or, or people saying to go there. And I had all these thoughts. I think people, especially in America, the media does a, a really, really good job of portraying these places in, in, in a very negative way and making it seem like everywhere outside of the United States is just super dangerous in a third world country and, and, and terrible anyways that's another that's another story um and so i was like wow i've never been there before and he's like that's where i'm from he started showing me pictures i'm like wow this looks amazing and so 
he's like, yeah, you should definitely add that to your list. So again, I'm like adding it to my list, right? But the guy was super nice. Um, he's like, man, I'm, I'm sorry that you can't use the Wi-Fi. I know another place that you could use the Wi-Fi after I ate. Dude literally walked me to the next place. It was super cool. So later that night, I'm on the computer and I'm like, um, okay, cheap places to live in Europe because London was just super, super expensive, right? It was gonna be very hard for me to bring my wife and my and our daughter to all of us live there in the city where I wanted to live and, and to just do everything that we wanna do. It's gonna be really expensive. So I'm like, let's go and find somewhere else. So all of these lists, I kept seeing Istanbul, 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 Budapest, Hungary, Budapest, Hungary, Budapest, Hungary. So I'm like, all right, maybe I should call my friend Lucia that I met in Mexico at the hostel and ask her, hey, Lucia, what do you think of, of Budapest, Hungary? Like I'm here, I'm in London, a, a lot of people keep saying it, what are your thoughts? So remember I called Lucia, I can't remember if I called her, I texted her. Hey, uh, I wanted to know your thoughts on Budapest. I was thinking of visiting, how's everything going? Where are you at in the world right now? And she said, I'm not in Budapest, Hungary. I'm in Istanbul, Turkey. And I was like, what, like, what are the chances? Like, what, like, my mind was just so blown. Like, what are the chances that this guy literally just told me to go there? And, and then I see Budapest on the list, which makes me want to call you. And then you're in Istanbul. So I started thinking, okay, I want to check out Istanbul, but I had all these negative things in my mind about it. So I'm like, Hey, I'll go ahead and, and go to Istanbul while she's there, while I have a friend that's there and I can experience it. And the crazy thing is, is like, she was there in Istanbul, Turkey, but I remember her telling me like, hey, I don't really wanna go out and explore a lot because I don't know how safe it is. So it really worked for both of us. I'm like, I can go, I can explore, but then you have someone that you can go out. So I remember I met up with one of my other friends that I had met in Mexico in London, and I was super nervous to go to Turkey. I'm like, okay, I just did solo traveling to London, but that was in my same language. I know that this country is relatively safe, right? Turkey, people were saying like, don't look at the women, keep your eyes down, people are gonna cut you up and sell your organs on the black market, all these crazy things. So I was a little nervous. And I remember my friend was just so confident, like, bro, you will meet the right people, don't worry. And I was like, how are you this confident for me? Like, how are you so sure? So anyways, I bought my ticket and the day the day that I was leaving, I was really nervous because one, I'm like, I don't know this country. I don't know how I'm gonna get there. I don't, when I land, I don't know how I'm gonna get to the, to the, to a, get a taxi or an Uber or any of that type of stuff. I don't speak the language and I have to get to the airport. I gotta take a bus shuttle, all these things I'm not really familiar with. So I remember I get on the underground, the tube or whatever it's called, and I had to get on a bus. And there's this crazy long line um, for the bus and I remember just sitting there waiting. I go in, when the bus comes, I go in and there were, they have these seats where someone's sitting this way and the other person's sitting this way, they're facing you. But where I sat, nobody was around me. So it was like five, 10 minutes go by and this guy comes and sits um, right in front of me. And he's on his phone, he's speaking, but it's not in English and I couldn't tell what language it was. And I kept feeling something say, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. And I was like, nah, I'm not gonna talk to this guy. Like that's weird, I don't know who this is. He might not even speak English, but I kept feeling this like tug, like a talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. So. I'm like, all right, I give in. I'm like, hey, what's going on? How's your day going? He speaks English. I'm like, hey, what, what language was that? He's like, that's Turkish. I'm like, ah, I'm heading to Turkey for the first time. He's like, oh, where are you going? I was like, Istanbul. He goes, ah, that's where I'm from. Uh, what flight are you on? I show him my ticket. He's like, we're on the same flight. And so we get off the bus. We literally hang out the whole time at the, at the airport. And then when we get on the flight, we're sitting in the same row. It, it was just literally crazy. I just remember my friend in the back of my mind saying, you're gonna meet the right people, you're gonna meet the right people. And then once we landed, I went through the, the immigration, the checkout line and checkout line. I went through the, 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 the immigration line or whatever it is to get into the country and they stopped me. I couldn't really understand what they were saying because uh, it wasn't in English, but I had to basically go and buy a visa. So at this time I'm flustered a little bit, like I had to pay more money. I don't know if they're scamming me or this is right. So then I leave and I'm like, ah oh, man, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get a taxi and all this type of stuff. And all this anxiety started coming back. And I see the guy that I met on the on the train, um, on the bus, on the train, and that I sat by on the, on the airplane. And he's like, bro, I waited for you. I waited for you. I wanted to make sure you get to where you're going safely. Come with my brother and we'll take you where you need to go. He took me out to eat paid for my meal and then took me where I need to go. And I was like, man, this is, you know, a, a, a crazy experience. I just kept hearing my friends say, you're gonna meet the right people, you know, you're gonna meet the right people. So anyways, after that, I ended up spending some time with Lucia in Istanbul, Turkey, we had a great time. And then she went and went back to Budapest and I stayed in Istanbul, Turkey for about three weeks. Now, I loved Istanbul, Turkey. And, and again, it's a shame that the, 
media makes a lot of these countries look a lot worse than they are, than they are because there's a lot of beautiful people all around the world. So I'm in Istanbul, Turkey, and I'm like, okay, I'm trying to figure out how now I'm going to get my wife and our daughter to Istanbul, Turkey. Again, our business is slow. I don't have a crazy amount of funds and it's going to be like $3,000 or something like that just for the flights. And so we're just like a little stressed about it. And I remember I was like, hmm, I'm just going to go to, um, I forget what site it is that I use, uh, Kayak, not Kayak, Kiwi. I'm going to go into Kiwi and I'm going to just type in from uh, Orlando, Florida to Europe and I'm going to see what pops up as the cheapest flight. So I did it, pressed enter and Budapest Hungary popped up. And I'm like, this is way, 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 way too many coincidence, coincidences going on. And so I remember I called my friend Lucia, hey, I know you've been telling us to go to Budapest Hungary and I keep saying I'm adding it to my list. Well, now we might actually be coming because it's cheaper for my wife and our daughter to come to Budapest Hungary. We can meet you there for like a week or so and then we'll fly into Turkey because it's cheaper to go from there. So that was the plan. I bought my tickets um, to go to Budapest. My wife bought her tickets. And then we just started thinking of like, we started doubting the decision. We're like, you know what? Instead of forget this Budapest thing, we're, we're probably not gonna like it. Let's just go to Mexico City, up somewhere that's familiar and just stay there for six months a year, get into a routine and build our life from there. And I remember she called and tried to cancel it. And they're like, you can cancel it, but we're not gonna give you our money. So I was like, she was a little frustrated about it. And I'm like, I don't know. I think if God didn't want us to go there, he would allow us to cancel. There has to be something that's waiting for us there. And so because the flights were cheaper to go to Budapest, we went to Budapest. I went a day, a day or two before they flew in. And when we saw the city of Budapest, like it's just such a magical and amazing city. It's beautiful. My friend Lucille was there. She took me to this co-working space called Captor and introduced me to some of the coolest, nicest, friendliest people. Um, and just really got me involved in a community and, and her being able to set me up with a lot of these things initially um, really made it easy for us to find people to hang out with, to build our life with. And after that first seven or 10 days, I actually before those days were up, I think it was the first three or four days, we're like, this is it. Like we found what we were looking for. Like we had a list of all the things that we were looking for. And outside of it being hot all year, pretty much checked off all those boxes. And since then, we have had such an amazing experience. My wife and our daughter, they teach the Ukrainians, some Ukrainians English here. Um, I did my first in-person workshop at the uh, networking, at the co-working space. I now host this group there. We found an amazing um, church here and like there's just been like I've had friends that have visited and we have just met some of the nicest people the coolest people and had some of the best experiences here that looking back on my life those times where I thought I was failing where life sucked where things were going bad where I could never get to where I was going and I thought my life was going in the wrong direction it was actually the some of the best things that could ever happen to me staying in the hostel at the time felt like a terrible experience felt like i was wasting my time it felt like i was just a, being a failure honestly in life however looking back if i if i wouldn't have stayed with my friend because we didn't have a lot of money if the water wouldn't have ran out if i wouldn't have stayed at a hostel i wouldn't have met lucia if i wouldn't have met Lucia, I would never have really known about Budapest or Hungary, any of those types of things. If Lauren Tickner wouldn't have told me about her event in London, I wouldn't have went early. If I didn't go early, I wouldn't have met the guy at the coffee shop that told me about Istanbul, Turkey. And if I wouldn't have met my friend in London, maybe I would have been uh, discouraged of going to Istanbul, Turkey. And then if I wouldn't have went to Istanbul, Turkey, I wouldn't have met all the amazing friends that I had there. And then if I would have never met Lucia, I wouldn't have been able to go there. So it's just crazy how all these things line up and it's just been a crazy experience and the reason why i wanted to share this video is maybe that's how you're feeling in your life right now you see people maybe like myself you see the instagram story and the post and you're like this person is living an amazing life and i wish i could be like them but you don't see what's going on behind the scenes but but more importantly in your life you see pretty much everything right you you see the things that are going on in your life and you maybe feel like i am a failure things aren't going right for me right now um my life is going in a totally wrong direction but what i want you to get out of this video is that god has a plan god has a purpose right and and we can't plan it out we can't think our way always to success we can't map everything out he has a bigger plan he has the dominoes lined up he has all the steps that we need to take and so what i learned to do is i just have to trust him right 
I have to just take one step at a time every single day. And I'm trusting that if I just keep being obedient, if I lead with positive energy, and if I do my best to be a good person and listen to what God is, is telling me, um, that it's going to lead in a place that's better than what I could have ever imagined. I couldn't have, if you gave me a whole day, a whole week, a whole month to map out where I'm at in my life, I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have imagined, oh, I'm gonna go to this coffee shop, meet this guy. Then I'm gonna meet this guy on the bus. Then I'm gonna go do this. Like, it's literally impossible um, to come up with. And so I just hope that this story inspires you to keep living your life. Like, don't stop, don't quit. Just because you're going through a tough time right now, maybe that's the, the, the environment, the situation that you need to have success in six months, in a year, in five years, in 10 years. You don't know, like they say, hindsight's 2020. So when you get there, you're gonna look back and you're gonna say, man, this makes so much sense. And I'm just so glad that all of this happened, right? And so now I can just live life in peace, right? I know that I'm going to go through tough times. I know I'm going to go through hard times. More often than not, those hard times and those tough times turn me into the person that I needed to be to get the results that I was really desiring. And it puts me in a situation that's better than what I could have ever dreamed of. And so I'm super glad that that happened, that I ended up in, 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 in Hungary, in Budapest, Hungary. And now I'm sure there's a reason why I came here that in six months, a year, or however long, I'll look back and I'll say, man, that makes sense. I'm glad that happened. So I hope this video inspired you. I'm curious, has anything like this ever happened to you? Let me know in the comments, share a little bit. I think it'd be cool if we have a thread of just people sharing inspirational stories where they thought they were failing, but it really turned into a big success story. So let me know in the comments. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram. I share a lot of my stories behind the scenes. Shoot me a message, we'd love to connect. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Hope this story inspired you. I'll see you on the next one. I said recently. Yo, so this is no. What is today? This December. Is, this is, this wait, wait, wait. Elsa. But wait, today is December fourth. Fourth. Uh, this is. The I'm staying here at Tomatas, and we have died. no water, no water. So we're gonna look back on this video one day when we're rich and be like, remember that time when we were talking to when we Elsa? had no water, trying to figure out how to make money <laughs> in Mexico. Ah, good, good times. Good times. <laughs>